I think we're seeing a um, global pattern of increased investment in digital education um, in all the universities that I've been speaking to recently. And it's not just in the technology, there's a real recognition that there needs to be a, an investment in people and process as well as technology. I think the global pandemic has really brought to the fore the, the potential affordances of digital technology to support higher education, to increase access um, for more students to engage with our universities and for our universities to be seen as leading the way in terms of providing more opportunities for students to engage both in a fully online mode, but also by providing opportunities on campus for students to get a better experience through a blended learning approach where digital technology is supporting students in face to face learning situations. Yeah, I think there's a number of drivers behind that. I mean, Prior to the pandemic, um, it was certainly about international student movement. Um, so particularly for Leeds, we were worrying, uh, particularly to our local context about Brexit and thinking about international student mobility. Um, but also the, the affordances of technology and the growth of online education platforms like Coursera and edX and uh, FutureLearn were, are a significant factor in our thoughts about future strategy for online education as the technology has improved the student demand is certainly there for growth of fully online that was being seen as a significant driver for us to increase our presence um, and as we've seen um, changing business models in terms of more unbundling of educational provisions with cert provision we're certainly seeing that demand from that grow for a different from a different cohort of learners so particularly professional learners who are looking to engage with universities on different more flexible terms and i think universities around the world are seeing opportunities to engage with a wider population of learners um, through digital education and to provide that kind of upskilling and reskilling and to generate additional income um, for their businesses. There's a number of different answers to that. There, there will always be a kind, there will never be actually a perfect mode for any particular discipline or any particular type of educational provision because a single um, way of doing things won't meet the expectations and the needs of all students. And I think that if we're really serious about access to higher education and inclusive access to enable all students to really get the best out of their educational opportunities, that requires a flexible approach. So the traditional, uh, in inverted commas, modes of delivery of learning and teaching in a didactic manner on a traditional campus are not inclusive to all students. So if we start with that premise that we want to be accessible and inclusive, it requires flexibility. So if we accept that we want to be more flexible, then the best way to do that is by augmenting a traditional face-to-face -face experience with the use of digital technology. And the evidence is there now in the literature that the use of digital technology does enhance the experience for students. It does provide the flexibility, it is more inclusive and it does support increased student engagement and it's not detrimental to students learning outcomes. So it's hard to find a reason why you wouldn't want to introduce the use of digital technology more in a traditional campus based setting. And in fact, some students really do require the use of digital technology to be able to actually access higher education. Um, so it's no longer really a debate about whether or not to include digital technology. The debate, I think, has moved on to how is digital technology going to be embedded into the curriculum to enhance the experience for students and to enable the experience for some students who require this kind of intervention to be able to um, continue their studies. I think COVID has, has done a lot actually for the cause of people who have been working in the space of digital education. So 
Um, one of the biggest problems pre-COVID was convincing staff um, that use of digital technology was beneficial to students. And there has there was global resistance on university campuses to even engage with uh, the, the notion of blended learning for some staff who were resistant to any use of digital technology. The global pandemic has forced all staff to make use of digital technology to enable education to continue. And what that's done has been rapid upskilling um, across all sectors um, of, of education and academic and professional staff. And it's enabled a lot of investment to be realized very quickly to make sure the technology is much better um, and more inclusive for students, but also investment in professional development has for staff has been um, really accelerated. So we're now in a much more level playing field from a perspective of all staff and the digital technology. And what we've got to do is to realize the potential from what we've all gained over the last six months and to take forward the things that have been beneficial to students learning and to adapt things where there have been problems. And of course, there have been problems. Um, but there have been more benefits, I would argue, than problems. And there are problems that have arisen that I've heard of are all surmountable. They're all things about device access, about internet access, about uh, training and about how to use the technologies effectively. All of those problems can be surmounted. Um, and the benefits that have come out of uh, use of digital technology to enable education are all really clear and tangible benefits that include access, that include inclusivity, that include flexibility. And those are things that we all as educators will want to take forward into the future. So I think every university needs to do that analysis of how we're going to take forward the good things and how we're going to overcome the barriers that we've identified.